Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to start talking about training. We're going to combine everything that we've learned so far about masking and the transformer architecture. And uh, we'll have a few tutorials. This is the first one. Okay, so here's our decoder on the architecture. Uh, here's a quick note on the left to remind us that we're talking about training, not inference in this case. And here's a sentence that we're putting into the transformer. As discussed previously, we wanted to learn uh, about this next word of. So we wanted to learn that in uh, this particular sentence in the English language, which is a valid sentence of the English language, after the first four words, apples are a type, and the next word is of. Now in other sentences that might be very different, but we wanted to learn from all sentences, including this one. And as we agreed previously, we're giving it all of the words, all seven words, even, even though we wanted to predict something here in the middle. Uh, the solution to this, as we discussed, is masking. So it takes in all of the words, but in the uh, multi-head attention mechanism, we're going to have masking, which will hide the words that are not uh, being used. Now, in the upcoming tutorials, we'll have some very cool uh, breakthroughs and we'll understand how there's going to be a lot of training actually done in one go in parallel in a transformer. But for now, for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to focus on this one sample, apples are a type of, and we'll see exactly how the error is calculated and what is backpropagated through the network. And then we will build on top of that in the upcoming tutorials. All right, so focusing on this one sample, apples are a type and the target word of, um, these words go through the transformer uh, in the masked component, uh, in the masked multi-head attention, the three words on the right are masked. As a result, in the output, we will get a probability distribution. Again, we'll talk about that in upcoming tutorials, uh, but just remember like from inference, we had probability distribution. So as an output in training as well, we get a probability distribution uh, for all of the words in our vocabulary. Let's say there's 200,000 of them. We get these probabilities, they add up to one. And um, we're interested only in the one, uh, the, the value, the probability for our target word. In this case, it's of, right? So we want the probability for this word of because we are looking to predict uh, we want the transformer to learn that the next expected word in this particular sentence was the word of. So in this case, the probability that we got is 0 0.02 or 2%. We want that probability to be 100% because in this particular sentence, that is the truth. That's the next word. Uh, we don't mind. We don't look at the probabilities of all the other words. We want to predict this word. And so what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the training error and in this tra in this word prediction, the training error is uh, 0 0.98, right? So we want it to be one, it's 0 0.02, so the difference is 0 0.98. And that's the value that gets back propagated um, through the network, or that's the error um, for this particular prediction. As we'll talk about in the upcoming tutorials, there'll, there'll be a bit more to this. It'll be really fun and cool and exciting how tr transformers can do so much more than just one sample. Uh, but in a nutshell, for this one particular sample, this is how the error is calculated. Hello and welcome back. Today we've got the big reveal, the mind-blowing insight uh, of what happens, what actually happens inside a large language model when you train it. So here is uh, where we left off previously. We talked about training of one sample, right? So we give it the whole sentence and we wanted to learn that after these four words, apples are a type, in this sentence, the next word is of. And then we talk about masking and how that all ties in with the um, probability distribution at the end and uh, calculating the error. Now, let's find out what actually happens in reality in a large language model. Well, these words, all of these seven words, apples are a type of delicious fruit, uh, they're passed into the large language model altogether as we had agreed. And what happens after that is uh, they go through the transformer and then they get to this last part. So let's discuss this last part, uh, what, it, how these, uh, how this probability distribution is generated. Let's see what happens here. So, uh, there's our, uh, architecture. As we know, these seven words, they go through the transformer in parallel. The only place in the transformer that they get to interact with each other is, is in this multi-head attention space, right? So we have, we build these word vectors, 
Um, then we add positional coding. Then here we enhance the word vectors for each of the words. So for each of the words, we'll have on the output of the multi-head attention, we'll have a context-aware vector. And that context-aware vector takes into account all of the unmasked words that are available to it. Then we get the um, add the norm, which is the residual connection layer normalization. Again, that happens separately to each vector. The feed forward neural network happens separately. This step also happens separately to each vector. So we have seven vectors because we put in seven words. Then we've got the linear softmax. So by the time we get to the linear transformation, we have this, this is one of our seven words, right? It's got 512 nodes. It goes through this linear transformation as in inference, as we saw in inference, it gets us 200,000 representation, which is the size of the vocabulary that we're dealing with. It could be different for different vocabularies, depends on how many words in your vocabulary, but basically that's the point of the, this linear transformation is to move from the current vector representation of 512 to the correct size of the output. So we get these logits here, and, and we want to turn them into a probability distribution. We apply a softmax, we get a probability distribution on the output. And remember, this is applied to each vector independently. So for the first vector, this will be done for the second, for the third, and so on, for the seventh. Again, of course, it's all done in parallel. It's one big matrix operation. Uh, but I just wanted to point out that these vectors are kept separate all the way to the output, just like we saw in inference. And now let's zoom in and find out in more detail about this output probabilities, like how that part works. So we're going to take this whole architecture that we have, this decoder-only architecture, and we're going to uh, squish it down into this box. So this is our full architecture all the way up to the uh, softmax and just before the output output probabilities. And this is all during training. So we're going to look at the words. They all go through this architecture as we discussed in parallel. And let's look at the word that um, we were interested in, at the word type, right? So we're looking at apples are a type and we're uh, we want the transformer to learn that the next word in this sentence is the word of. We want, to, one, we want it to learn from that. Um, so effectively, we want it for this sentence to be able to predict the next word as of. So in the decoder-only uh, architecture, architecture, architecture in the uh, attention mechanism, we had a mask, right? Remember, we had a triangular mask. So we would add negative infinity to the dot products of these of the k of the q vector of type with the k vectors of these three words, uh, we would replace them or we would add negative infinity so that uh, the transformer cannot look ahead. And as a result, um, the prediction these these probabilities that we get they come from a um, ve a context rich vector um, of the word type that that goes you know that goes has gone through the whole decoder only architecture including the feed forward neural network and everything. So this these probabilities came from a, a context rich vector that had no visibility of these three words because of this triangular mask. So it is totally valid to take this value that we have here and it's going to be little they're going to be all small at the start because this is you know just the first step in the training the weights are randomly initialized um it doesn't really matter what they are later in the training these values will be high whatever this value is we're going to take this value and we're going to calculate the error so the error we want this to be the word of so the probability should be 100 percent. we have a probability in this case of one percent so the error is 99 0 0.99 so that's our error and that's what we can backpropagate through the network. But this is where the things get even more interesting, really interesting. Let's look at the previous word. Let's look at this word. When it went through the network, it had a triangular mask applied. Same, same triangular mask was applied, but because it's in this uh, earlier position, it, uh, the, um, it wasn't like the masking that was applied hid these three, these four words type of delicious food. So the only words that this vector can get context from is from itself, from R and apples. Remember, it's a causal mask. It's a triangle mask. It doesn't let it any vector see work vectors come, that come after it or any words see words that come after it for the purpose of the attention mechanism. So what we have is apples are A and the uh, this vector was only able to see these three words. So it is the same situation as if we were training the transformer to predict this word. So now we have a probability, uh, probability distribution, which comes from a context-rich vector, which only knows these three words. So it is totally fine, it is totally normal to use this 
distribution to predict this next word type, to l train the transformer to predict uh, that the next word in this particular sentence was the word type. So we get the error here and we can back propagate this error as well. But it gets even more interesting. We can do the same thing for this word. In this case, apples are, so this vector that we're creating for the word are, it only has context information about R and apples, only about these two words. It doesn't see any of these words because of the triangular mask. So now uh, we've got a probability distribution and we can use it to predict that the next word should be A. And again, we calculate an error. Same thing for apples. In this case, it can only build a context-rich vector from itself because all of the other ones are masked with the triangular mask. So we get a probability distribution and we can use it to predict that the next word should be R or for the transformer to learn that in this sentence the next word was R. And we get an error again here. So then, uh, same thing if we go this way. For the word of, uh, we were only able to build a context-rich vector using the words apples are a type of, not seeing these two words, so the probability distribution that we get, we can use, uh, we can find the word delicious somewhere in our vocabulary, see what probability it has, and use that, calculate the error, so it should be 100%, it's in this case 2%, calculate the error, and we can backpropagate that. Same thing for this word, right? How cool is this mask? Uh, it hides this word fruit, so in this case we're working with the sentence apples are a type of delicious, without the word fruit, so we need to, we're learning to predict the word fruit. In this case, we calculate again the error uh, and we can back, back propagate it. And even the same thing for this last word. Uh, it's got, it's the, the, the vector that we're building from this word fruit has context about, or is allowed to see context about all of these words. Apples are a type of delicious fruit, including itself. So the, the mask is, every, is completely transparent here. Um, and what do we want to predict? Well, somewhere in our vocabulary, there's this token called EOS, end of sequence. And that's the correct token for this case because that is the end of sequence. So that's what we want to be predicting and we calculate the error there. And as a result, we get these errors. In this case, we get seven samples. We get seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, samples that go in, that, that we get in one go. So we put in one sentence with seven words and as a result, we had seven training samples that the transformer saw and was able to calculate the error. Then we calculate a combined loss from these errors. So we put them all into one loss. And then we backpropagate that loss through the network. Again, please check a separate tutorial on backpropagation. Uh, we have plenty of them in Super Data Science. We have some good ones in Super Data Science. But basically, this whole loss is backpropagated for the network. Weights are adjusted. And the training moves on to the next sequence. Wow, right? How crazy is that? If you're feeling uh, like that at the moment, that's that's totally normal because this is the power of transformers. They're so efficient, right? You give them seven words instead of getting one training, one well, instead of them seeing one sample, they see seven samples. Well, the transformer or the large language model sees seven samples. And uh, imagine if you give them a thousand words, that would be a thousand samples in one go. And this is all happens as one, as matrix operations. So it all happens in parallel. It's not, it's not that we're, this is done train, this is trained first and second, third, it's not sequential train. This is all trained in parallel. All these errors are calculated in parallel and then the combined loss is calculated and back propagate. Hello and welcome back. Today we are continuing diving even deeper into training of a large language model. Let's go into it. All right, so here's what we discussed previously. Uh, we talked about how training of one sample happens. Uh, then we talked about the triangular mask, or this was actually even earlier. We talked about the triangular mask and how it works. Then we saw the triangular mask in action. We saw how it's applied uh, during the processing of one sentence by a transformer. So here we have apples are a type of delicious fruit. And thanks to the triangular mask, we actually get not just one, uh, sample the transformer sees, but it actually sees seven samples, one for each word, and we discussed exactly how the triangular mask is applied in order to accomplish the prediction of every single next word every single time, including at the end, the end of sequence um, token. And uh, here's uh, <laughs> here's a summary of what we where we left off last time that we have multiple training samples in one go. A combined loss is calculated for the errors. The losses back propagate through the network. Weights are adjusted and training moves on to next sequence. Incredible! All this happens in parallel at the same time because it's uh, just a series of matrix uh, multiplications and matrix operations. 
Um, and today we're going to build on top of that even further and see in reality what happens, right? Like we're not going to be dealing with uh, seven um, word sentences. Transformers take in much bigger sentences, much bigger segments actually. Let's look at that. So uh, here's a text uh, from Wikipedia. This is uh, from the Wikipedia article about apples. And what a transformer would do is would break it up into segments. So we're going to, like the transformer takes, uh, it is trained on all of the text on the internet. Or you could train it, for example, on all of the text on Wikipedia, right? So you could take this, art. it would take this article and it would break it up into segments. Um, typically, segments would be very big. We're going to take a segment of 100 words just for illustration purposes, right? So that's 100 words there highlighted in uh, that yellow color. Uh, then from there, the next 100 words would be the next segment. The next 100 words would be the next segment and so on. So it would break it down into segments. Um, then what would happen is uh, training, uh, the training data would be split, well, basically it's split into these segments and then each segment is given to the model as input. So the transformer doesn't do this splitting. That's like a separate um, algorithm that would split the data into these segments. Uh, and then they would be given to the transformer. So every single time, this transformer would take a segment, in this case, 100 words. In each segment, the model will learn to predict every single next word. And just as we saw with seven words, same thing with 100 words. So in the case for a 100 token segment, that means there'll be 100 training samples in one go each time. And uh, as we discussed, it's not sequential. So those 100 training samples won't be calculated, the errors won't be calculated by the transformer one at a time. It'll all happen in one go because it is matrix multiplications, matrix operations. Everything just happens in one go right away. We get these, as an output, we get these 100 errors. Um, usually, actually, it's not 100 uh, token segments. They're much bigger. Uh, typically, it would be, um, you would want to maximize this. You would want to get as much training, training samples in as possible in one go. So you would maximize this and you would uh, typically put it at the size of the context window. We'll talk more about the context window, but if uh, the large language model can take in 30,000 words in one go, 30,000 tokens in one go, then it'll be 30,000 tokens. And that means 30,000 samples, training samples, all in one go, 30,000 errors calculated, and then the loss calculated from them and back propagated. So these, we're talking about huge, huge uh, segments of text. Uh, and here's a comment that context windows you know, can be 20,000, 30,000, 100 these days, 100,000 plus, and they're growing as the models are, as new models, newer models, updated models are released. Uh, these tra these uh, context windows are growing, meaning that they can process. Not only context window applies in in inference. That's how much you can, what kind of size or prompt you can give to the transformer, but also it applies in training, and that's uh, how much, um, what kind of segments, maximum segments it can take in and learn from that. So there you go. That's how training a large language model actually happens in reality. It's incredibly efficient. Uh, and it gives you this in, within segment, we will call this in, the, in, uh, in this course, we will call this within segment parallelization, that inside each segment, you're not just getting one sample, you're not getting uh, multiple samples sequentially, you're getting all of the samples from each of the words, uh, and all that happens in parallel. So you're calculating multiple errors, thousands of errors in one go. Now make sure to check out these videos on the right or the full course in the description to continue your learning. And I look forward to seeing you there.